saw this evening is for the interim middleweight championship. Introducing press, hiding out of the blue corner. Please welcome Kevin Bryan. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here at Full Contact Contender 5 at the Bolton Reebok. Brad 48 Warren here in the competition position. I'm joined as always by Ian Jess Cook. And now we have the last of three title bouts for you this evening. And it is the interim amateur middleweight title to be contested by Kevin Fryer and Christoph Pachuki. Of course, our middleweight champion Ant Bailey was supposed to fight Kev Fryer tonight. Unfortunately, Ant broke two ribs training a couple of weeks ago. Christopher Pachuki stepped up on just two weeks notice to take this fight against a very game opponent in Kevin Fryer. Jez, tell us a little bit about what Kevin Fryer is all about. Yeah, so Kevin's got a, a, a tough opponent, a tough opponent to step in uh, for Anne Bailey, and especially on such short notice. Uh, the guys here did, did an amazing job to find such a such a tough opponent willing to come in. Uh, quickly, add, uh, you know, I'd like to send send out, and I'm sure you would as well, Brad. Uh, our thoughts to Anne. Hope he makes a speedy recovery, and we look forward to seeing him again soon on FCC. But Kevin Fire, you know, is a, a very dangerous, intelligent fighter. Uh, he, his train comes out of uh, Shikata. Head coach is Gary Savage over there. He's a black belt, former European BJJ champion. Um, you know, there's some top quality guys. Coach Mario Shikata himself is one of Michael Bisping coaches. So you know these guys are going to come. Uh, sorry, you know Kevin Fry is going to come in here with an all-round uh, uh, MMA skill set. And uh, yeah, it's going to be extremely exciting. I just watched him earn some victories with submissions. Saw him on his feet. He looks very comfortable and confident. Um, and speaking to him, he does expect a tougher fight than Bailey. Interesting, but um, you know, Pachuski is very equally matched. They've got a very similar skill set, so it's going to be a really interesting match. And his opponent, hiding out of the right corner, he's welcome, Christoph Pahuki! Our second fight to the, to the cage, Christoph Pahuki. Jez, this guy's 2-1-0, oh. we, we know he fought on the last FCC, and that one loss was due to an unfortunate illegal knee. But what more can you tell us about Christoph Pahuki? i tell you what, dangerous. Very, dangerous, absolutely. Very dangerous, and actually, uh, Fry admitted that to me. He said, his personal opinion, not mine here, but Fry's personal opinion is that actually Bahuki is, uh, is actually a more dangerous, more fitable opponent than Ann Bailey. I don't know whether that's true or not, but we'll certainly find out. Uh, Bahuki, uh, he is a dangerous guy. He throws, he throws some serious shots with, with incredible accuracy and devastating power. It's extremely aggressive, looks to rush his opponents, really get in their face. I'm sure he's going to do that here tonight against Fry. He's not going to want to give him any breathing space. Whilst he has <coughs> and got an extremely dangerous striking background, he's also amazing on the floor at a black ledge. Um, yeah, what, what more can I say? This is going to be a fantastic fight. I'm just going to throw a little spanner in the works, Jess, to how we think this one might play out. Because I was upstairs in the warm up area earlier on this evening. And I saw Kev Fryer warming up in the pads, and he looked incredibly sharp. His boxing looked very, very good. Uh, mate, I can't call this one, it's too close, it really is. Um, I'm just going to sit back, relax, call it, and enjoy it, because it's, it promises to be uh, an amazing fight. Uh, and just privileged to be here, really, uh, and uh, I'm so grateful, because these guys train so hard, they're going to bring it. And uh, yeah, folks, let's see how this one unfolds. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next part is sponsored by Premier Therapy. And it's for the interim middleweight championship schedule for five three minute rounds. Introducing this, hiding out of the blue corner. He has a mixed match loss record of seven victories and two defeats. Representing Sukata. Referee Paul Crosley bringing these two middleweight warriors into the center of the cage for final instructions. So we see Kev Fryer in the red board shot and Christoph Pahuski in the white Legacy Valley Tudor trunks. Don't blink. 
do not blink. We can see a flash knockout. We can see a snap submission. Anything can happen in this one, Jez. No touch of gloves. These guys want to get straight to it. A fryer with a nice one too. And Bohuski with a takedown. Here we go. It's on the mat. Let's see which one uh, can stamp his authority here. Fire already looking nice and comfortable there. Quick hips. Tying his man up. Jakur in the arm. Pulling that head down. Not giving his opponent any room. But uh, Pahuki, as we know, keep him busy. Passes into half guard. And this fight started exactly the opposite of what we expected. Fryer throwing the shots. And Pahuski with the takedown. Yeah, that's very much so, but at the same time, we also know that both guys are extremely accomplished on the deck. So, uh, yeah, I, I think at some point, I hope at some point, we're going to see both fighters' capabilities on the on the mat and then hopefully on the feet again. Uh, how, it, how it unfolds and how it finishes, who knows? But, uh, yeah, uh, it's really, really set and nicely poised here. Well, at the moment, they're on the ground and we're seeing a nice grappling exchange here. Buzki looking to chip away at his man, possibly set up a guard pass, maybe step into mount. Maybe step over into side side control. But, but a clever fight from Fry. He's not let, giving uh, Pahuki any room. He's got that right arm of Pahuki. He's nice and tied up. And he, if he can, he want to try and roll him there and possibly uh, get into half, half guard himself. But uh, a, dif a difficult um, objective by him, but a, an option to him. Well, we know Kev Fry is going to be comfortable in this position. You know, Sakata guys, jiu-jitsu masters. He's not going to be worried about the position he's in now. He's going to be comfortable working from this position. But he has to be careful with a guy like Christoph on top of him because we know that Christoph can do damage. Very much so. I think that's one of the key things for these guys is uh, when, they're, when they're able to relax, they're able to think and they're able to employ their game plan. And that's absolutely critical at this level. And it's very much a stalemate at this point, Jez. They seem to be cancelling each other out. And perhaps this could be the first of the bouts we've had tonight that will go into the championship rounds. Very much so, and that will certainly uh, prove decisive as we, as we go because uh, yeah, conditioning is everything. But I, I don't, I, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it unfolds. But certainly, both are fairly equally matched on that in that area as well. Referee Pro Cosley giving these guys plenty of time to work. Not won the fraction yet as they jockey for position. Big Topahuski on top here in the half guard of Kev Fryer. But he's eating away the clock, isn't he? And that's what he needs to do. You know, it's not all about going for that submission. It's about points, taking rounds. And he's doing everything he needs to to win this round at the moment. Absolutely. And while it is a stalemate, the judges... And Pahuski looking again to try and pass that guard into side control. Trapped that arm nicely, but I think that's possibly a little bit too late. He's moving to the last moments of this round. And a solid first round will be registered now by Christoph Pouski. And Kev Fryer will have to go back to the drawing board because he's not been able to utilise those submission skills from this position. Both guys look uh, fairly calm. Neither of them look to have suspended too much energy, although that would have been testing and trying, uh, just jostling for that position there. As we see Rochelle, our lovely round identification technician, indicating that the second round is about to start here at full contact in 10 to 5 here from the Reebok Stadium in Bolton. So Brad, what do you think uh, Blackledge is uh, saying to uh, Christoph at the moment? What, what kind of advice do you reckon he's giving him? If Anton Blackledge, I'm telling Christoph more of the same, please. He controlled it, he didn't expend too much energy, he didn't take too many unnecessary risks. He did enough to keep the fight going, avoided the stand-ups. What more can you ask? Can he do it for five rounds though? That is the question. And how is Kev Fryer going to get back into this fight? <laughs> Referee Paul Crosley calls for a start for this second round. Oh, and there's a huge take hit by Bouski. And a one-two to follow up. But Kev Fryer now desperately looking to tie his man up as he's pressed into the cage. And both men jostling for position now. Kev Fryer trying to tie that neck up. Looking for a plump lynch. But it's Bohuski still being the more active fighter. Nice trip takedown. Fire with the Wizards able to stand back up though and put a nice knee to the midsection in. I don't know what I was more impressed with, that kick or the way that, uh, that Kevin Fire just shook it off. Equal credit to both guys there. Fantastic head kick landed by Christoph. And credit to Fryer for shaking it off and carrying on fighting.
Very much just brushed it off, didn't he? But left his hand a bit low. I don't think he'll be doing that again anytime soon. Well, it'll be, a, it'll be a hard lesson to learn for Kevin Fry. I'm sure he won't make the same mistake again. And I'm sure he's calling him something to say about that should he go to the next round. But it is a nice position here for Fry. He's got him right up in the cage, right by his corner. He's giving him some calm advice. He's not rushing it. He's just taking his time. Exactly what he needs to do. He needs to stamp some authority here in a second and tie things up. And points being scored now. Cage control from Kev Fryer. Pits a patter of tiny knees going in. But he's got his man pressed up against the cage. Yes. And he's probably even this round out on the judges' scorecards now after that head kick. Some nice control by Kev Fryer to swing this one back into an even kill. Yeah, some nice knees there. Five now in a row. And he's, uh, he's, he's accurate with them. He's finding them. He's landing them. Booski pushing back though. And a nice knee for Booski there. That's what we said earlier, these guys are so evenly matched. It's, it's, you know, it's wonderful matchmaking by the guys here. Adam Tay in particular does a fantastic job and really puts on such an amazing, amazing card for us. Absolutely, there's no easy fights here at FCC. Everybody's been matched well and we've seen that with the quality of the card this evening, Jez. Well, that's it. That's why this is the number one amateur event in the UK. Fryer now muscling his man up against the cage. Pushki looks the bigger of the two, but Fryer using technique to pin his man there. Pushki turns around though. Fryer looking to get his arms around the neck and another head kick for Pushki. Catches him on the chin for a second time. Goes for a big straight left and it's Fryer with a takedown. And now Fryer is in the open guard of Pushki. Yeah, it was brilliant. Just stepped away. Amazing athleticism to just snap that, snap that foot up and just catch him there. Beautiful technique by Christoph. It's a well-timed takedown, and Kev Fryer now surely will be looking to land some bombs from this position. But like here, what Christoph's doing, he's not wrapping his feet around, he's giving himself room to kind of just push off and manoeuvre from there. You know, just waiting, find an opportunity to create some space and uh, throw up some, uh, some sort of uh, submission attempt from his back. Well, that, that's, that's basically what he's setting up there. Obviously, he's not got enough time, but I like the way that he, he's thinking about it. He's not just relaxing, he's not giving his opponent any time just to settle. He's making his opponent think about it. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a trait of a good fighter. Absolutely. Well, a very intriguing couple of rounds here. If you're one of the judges, how do you score this one? Uh, I think one apiece at the moment, Brad. I think so. Um, very, very close. Uh, Huski, I think, took the first one. Fry the second. So, uh, moving into the third, it's anyone's game, isn't it? And, you know, both are very equally matched. But um, I must say, Bahuski, you know, he's, he's landing with that with that kick. I'd like to see him uh, stand up and, uh, and really trade and really, uh, really test Fry's, um, Fry's ability as a striker. You mentioned earlier that he looked very calm and confident uh, and very smooth upstairs on the training mats, but it's a whole different ball game bringing that in into the cage under these, under these condi uh, conditions. Absolutely, Jez. Jez, I actually tend to disagree with you. I actually uh, have given Christoph the first two rounds. I thought he was the more aggressive fighter, and I thought those two head kicks that landed reasonably cleanly did it for me. But I, I do agree with you in the sense that he's very, very close, and that second round could have gone either way. Let's see what happens in the third round here at full contact at 10 to 5. And there's a nice left by Pootski. Another kick, that time it goes to the body. And Fryer throwing a flurry of shots there. Left hook caught Pootski. Body kick by Fryer. Pootski catches a leg and takes him down. Yeah, a nice takedown. I mentioned earlier, Brad, there's a reason why I'm a commentator and not a judge. But very close fight, and uh, Pahuki is, uh, is doing, he's doing really well here. I mean, considering this as well, Brad, right, he's come in this and took, uh, took this fight with two weeks' notice. I mean, that just goes to show the kind of condition and the kind of training that this guy puts in week in and week out. Pahuski is that special kind of individual, though. He'd probably fight John Jones on two weeks' notice. This, this guy just loves to fight. He loves to be in there, he loves to test his skills, and he loves to put on a show for the FCC fans, and he's certainly doing that right now, Jez. A bit of interesting uh, trivia here as well for you. There's only one person that this guy won't train with, won't fight, and who's that? It's his brother, That's Adam Pahuski. Yeah. Although, I, I, here, unless they've had a little argument about the extra roast potato on a Sunday lunch, uh, yeah, there's, there's no way these guys want to train together. Kev Fryer now has his man against the cage. Nice little knee into the midsection there. And they're tussling for position against the fence now as referee Paul Crosley looks on. Had some fantastic officiating tonight from Paul Crosley and Neil Hall. Officials, judges and referees all supplied by MMA officials. 
If you need judges, if you need referees, if you need timekeepers for your show, check out MMA officials. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter. These guys really are the best in the business. And Kevin Fryer now in top position inside the guard of Christoph Bootsky. Well, he was smart there, wasn't he? He tied up the arms. Uh, and so when Christoph went for the takedown, was able just to put him back off, uh, unstabilize his balance, and then get the position. So, yeah, some smart work there from him, waiting for that right opportunity to present itself, not rushing, calm, collected, and uh, now in a position where he wants to work, he wants to get some points, and uh, we'll try and take this round, because it's absolutely vital. And Kev Fryer landing some nice shots there, scoring points in the eyes of the judges, I'm certain. Fryer trying to stack up, trying to posture up, create a little bit of distance to get some leverage behind those punches and do some damage as he has Pahutsky up against the fence. I like to see Pahutsky, he's got a nice got a half, half uh, butterfly guard there. It'd be nice to sit the other one in, get both, both feet in and try and flip his opponent over. It's an underrated move that you don't see very often here but can be used to good effect. Well, Pahutsky certainly needs to do something in this round because Kev Fry is walking away with it. And with 10 seconds to go, it seems very unlikely. And there's a big right hand from Kev Fryer, and another one, and a couple of left. And Kev Fryer finishes this round in a very, very strong position. And now, Jez, we head into the championship stages. And this is where it counts, isn't it? Um, Kev Fryer has been training for these, these five rounds, hasn't he? Um, it is going to be a test. We've talked about uh, uh, Puki, how good his training is coming in here. Unbelievable. But will his training allow him to go into these deeper rounds? Will they? Will his cardio? Will his conditioning? Will it be there for this? Because this is this is what separates him. This is what makes a champion. Exactly. This is what separates the men from the boys, Jez. And as you say, Pootsky took this fight on two weeks' notice. He has not been preparing for a five-round fight. He's not been preparing for any fight. On the other hand, Kevin Fryer has been preparing for a five-round fight for some time now. That could be the deciding factor. And as we've seen so far in the first three rounds, Pahutsky starts off stronger, Fryer came back in the third. Is that going to be the story as this bout moves forward? Yeah, we'll, see, we'll soon see, won't we? There is nothing like a classic slugfest entering the later stages of a title bout. There really isn't. And Kevin Fryer coming out looking very, very confident there. Taking the centre of the cage, and perhaps his coaches have told him that he's got Pahutsky on the back foot. Both men looking tentative here to start off this fourth round. A nice leg kick from Kev Fryer. Flurry of shots there. Pahutsky landed the better strike, I believe. Fryer's now got him tied up and puts a nice little knee to the body in. Pushes him back, try to work him back, but Hookie wriggles out. Straight left from Fryer, and immediately they're tied up again on the fence. What people don't realise is the amount of energy it, you, you consume in these kind of positions, just vying for position, it absolutely drains you. Uh, people don't appreciate it, but it really does. It's exhausting business. Pooski has been able to trip Kev Fryer a number of times, didn't fully get it that time, and referee Paul Crosley now warning Pooski for grabbing the shorts of Kev Fryer. Lovely turn on the cage there from Fryer. Pressing his man up against the fence, giving him no room to breathe. Fryer's just non-stop, isn't he? He just keeps so busy. Just those little digs, those little knees, just keeping busy, letting his opponent know that, you know, he's not going to give him a second respite. It can be demoralising. Jez, as you well know, nothing drains your cardio like grappling. And we know that Kev Fryer is used to long bouts of grappling. So, of course, He's trying to wear Pahutsky up against the cage and he's trying to wear him down. He's trying to suck all that strength out of him by grinding on him and it really looks like it's working here in the later stages of this five round title fight. Yeah, smart fighting by uh, Kev Fryer. Fryer putting the shots in. A nice knee from Fryer there. Pahutsky did not like that one. Fryer's got him tied up and Fryer lands another knee. I wonder if Pahutsky's getting and tied And another knee from Fryer and another knee. Pahutsky did not like that. And he needs to keep moving. Pahutsky pulls guard on Kev Fryer. Fryer's gone straight into a mount position. And now Fryer's on these shots from the top, Jez. Yeah, this is a real dangerous point. But well played there by Christoph. Able to get those feet in. Butterfly guy needs to just create some space. Fryer trying to step around or step over that guard. Looking to secure a dominant top position so he can rain down more shots. Yeah, well, he'll be happy from that with his BJJ experience. He'll be happy to move around and just 
play and toy with Christoph. It's what he's done. He's established a nice position again here. Mount again, securing him. Uh, he's going to have a really strong base. So Christoph's going to struggle to to create some space, either get out, slide out, kick him over, or um, <laughs> whatever you do. It's not going to be an easy task. And every time Farah looks to get Mount, we see Puchki get the butterflies in and push him off. Fantastic defensive work from the bottom here by Pahutski. But exhausting stuff as well. And he looks knackered, doesn't he, Brad? Absolutely. And Kev Fry is going to end this round in a dominant position. Drops a big right hand. And that's the end of the fourth for Alan Jez. This is going to be two rounds apiece now. All to play for in the fifth and final round. Yeah, it's exciting stuff now. Um, yeah, I... Th I th my feelings are um, that Christoph is, is, is just suffering from that lack of, that lack of training uh, coming into this match. Um, and I think that is really the difference between the two at this moment. Because certainly from what we saw earlier, uh, skill-wise, very, very close. Um, but sensible and smart fighting by Kev. Uh, intelligent um, uh, advice from his, from his corner. Um, getting him to get Pahuki against the cage, wearing down with that grappling. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm really, I'm, to be honest, I'm impressed by both guys. I always, I always am with these guys. This has been a war, and when you consider that Booski took this fight on two weeks' notice, you're going to give him all the credit into the world for getting into the fifth round here. And not just getting into the fifth round, this fight's even. This could go any which way. Yeah, I know we, I know we keep going on about that, but, it, you know, it really is something special. Um, this has been a real war as Paul Crosley starts the fifth and final round and what could very well be the deciding round should this fight go to the judges scorecards of course Jez there's every chance we could see a knockout or submission for one of these two bad boys that's it what we'll come down to is one round the winner of this will take that title so you know each guy is going to go uh, absolutely out big part are not going to take the title because it's obviously an interim but they're going to put themselves as number one challenger number one contender um, so uh, you know <laughs> It's such they, did, they do get amount. a nice big shiny belt for their troubles though. Wow. Oh, there's a huge combination there from Kev Fryer and he hurt Christoph Pahutski. Can he capitalise though? Can he get round that excellent, excellent guard? He really rocked Pahutski then, but he's not able to capitalise and get a dominant position on the ground, Jez. No, Pahutski's being intelligent off his back, he's been smart, he's kept busy. Even when he looks to be exhausted at the time, he's just, you know, he's constant. He's to wrap up uh, Kev Fryer's arms here. Doesn't want to give him any space to enforce some ground and pound. Wants to keep it tidy and tight. Kev Fryer looking to move up, tried to get Mount there. But he was smart, didn't give him any room. Fryer kicking at the legs there, scoring points, trying to get past that guard. It's been such a strong guard for Pukski all night. Yeah, it has. Fryer, Fryer, you know, he's done well because he's not got frustrated where a lot of other fighters would, but uh, Pahuki's put up an amazing, amazing defence here. He's not given uh, 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 Kev Fryer any opportunity. I mean, we've not even seen a submission attempt here at all, um, and that's testament, that's testimony to both uh, uh, capabilities of both fighters, offensively and defensively as well. Um, some great work by both, both guys. Well, if we thought it was even going into this fifth and final round, you've got to think that Kevin Fryer is going to be ahead on the judges' scorecards. And the last minute or so that we've got left here could be deciding this fight and could be deciding who becomes the new interim FCC middleweight champion. But Christoph's right in the corner there. I'm sure Tom's given him uh, some, some words of wisdom. He wants to get back up and that's what he's done. Fryer was looking for the neck there, didn't get it, but he's landed a big knee. A huge knee to the face of Pahuski against the cage. And they're not, they're not the massive, most damaging blows, but they're consistent. And after five rounds, they take their toll. Abuski consistently go into his back. It seems that offensively, he's not got that much to offer Kev Fryer, but he's on the defensive in, in this one. He took that knee and he fell back down to his back. And we've not seen Kev Fryer be able to do much damage while abuski has been in this position. And as we go into what is the last 10 seconds of this title fight, it's going to go down to the judges' scorecards, and it would seem that Kev Fryer will take a decision three rounds to two. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the way I've got it as well. It's, uh, it's a very close one, but um, 